Hey everyone, my name is Perry, I'm an electrical engineer, and today we're going to watch a Dr. Stone episode 8 to see how accurate all the science and technology in this TV show really are. Senku is absolutely correct. The Earth's axis like is changing a little bit every year. As of right now, I think it's like 23 degrees um, on its axis, but it'll oscillate between 22 degrees and like 24.5 degrees. It's this tilt on the Earth's axis that actually gives us the seasons of the year. Depending on where the magnetic north pole is located relative to the sun, you'll get a different season. So for example, if the magnetic north pole is tilted facing the sun, then the northern hemisphere will be in summer. But if the north pole is tilted away from the sun, the northern hemisphere will be experiencing winter. If you're in the southern hemisphere of the planet, you probably only have two seasons, a wet season and a dry season. The higher the angle of the um, axis tilt, the more extreme the seasons will be. It takes about 40,000 years <laughs> for the Earth to actually like rotate between the 22 degrees and the 24.5 degrees on its axis. So it'll constantly like be like going up and down. It looks like a cosine function. Like it'll start off at like 23 and it actually won't loop back to 23 until 40,000 years. We're not gonna feel a whole lot of difference because by next year it might, like right now it's 23 degrees, right? By next year it might be 22.9999, right? So we're not gonna feel a whole lot of difference in how we perceive the seasons of the earth, like you know, the fall, winter, spring, summer, but 3,700 years go by, you'll be able to measure a little bit of a difference. Like if the, if the axis is decreasing, meaning it's going more towards 22 degrees, then the seasons won't be as extreme, like the winters won't be as cold and the summers won't be as warm. It'll all kind of like blend together a little bit more. But if it's like 24 degrees, then the winters will be slightly colder and the summers will be slightly warmer. That's just a compass. I mean, that's like exactly what a compass is. It's just like a magnet and it, um, like magnetic like field of the earth means like this magnet will always point north. That's what compasses do. And, like if you look at the actual like magnet he has like on the leaf, even though it's like not a perfectly rectangular shape, it still has a very defined north pole and south pole. And yeah, like no matter how you place, like how you orient it or how you place it on the water, it will always turn so that it faces north. <laughs> Okay, um, that's the spirit, but it, it, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> um, like, you're not gonna blow air into this, like, giant, like, clay pot and then somehow increase the temperature from 700 degrees to 1500. That... Uh, like that's just not gonna work. You have like two dudes, a girl, and this random kid with a watermelon on his head. Like it's a cool team, but just using those fans is not gonna help you increase the temperature of the fire that much. I, I get what they're doing though. It's like they're like they're pretty much like fanning the fire, so you're putting more oxygen into it, which means that it's going to burn more intensely, and that is scientifically correct. Um, just it it it's just misguided. Like it, it's not gonna work with just those guys. Even if they got the whole village, like, multiple fans, and they were all just, like, trying to, like, coke this flame with as much oxygen as they possibly could, I still don't know if that would be enough people, because if, if you just Google, like, how steel is made today, like, these are massive machines, and they're pumping, like, pure oxygen down a valve to, like, really heat this flame. And what these fans are doing is just, like, it's mostly just nitrogen, because that's the air around them. It's not actually, like, producing any sort of pure oxygen from it. And, like, the little bit that they are adding, it's just, like, everybody working, like, triple overtime, you're still not gonna have enough oxygen to make this flame, like, heat up by that much. But watching them try was really entertaining. Okay. <laughs> 
So he's not wrong about that. It's just, like, I wouldn't consider chefs to be scientists. I mean, you can call them, like, culinary scientists, I guess. But it's, I, okay, maybe just, like, for me personally, I, I don't want to involve, like, even though I'm an engineer, I don't want to involve, like, scientific theory and just, like, a scientific mind to everything that I do in my life. I mean, I granted here, like, this is for survival purposes, so it's a bit different, but even, like, engineers and physicists, like, if we just want to eat, right? Like, it's not so much, like, as we're eating, it's not like, oh, like, the, like, the salt in this food must be, like, 44 milligrams. Like, we're not, like, thinking like that. Like, sometimes I just want to eat my food and not think about anything else. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed that and found some value in the video. If you want to see more Dr. Stone, go ahead and comment that down below. If there's anything else you want me to watch or commentate over, like a movie or TV show, just let me know and I'll get to it as soon as I can. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay fresh and stay golden.